before continuing part two of the series, please, ladies and gentlemen, constituents, let's make sure that we do our rightful duty by getting engaged and going to vote. Please, let's vote. Problem, I was scared yeah. to death for my grandmother, yeah. and I probably could have took her, but I wouldn't try because I did something. Children know the difference between yeah. discipline yeah. and abuse. Right. Yeah. I'm scared of her, and she been gone too. Yeah. Hey, you don't know. And then I had aunts and uncles that kept it 100. Would you raise your voice that loud to my mother? Boy, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't just get it on from grandma. Everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Hey, quick! I know that you're real in your faith. Um, what's the one um, message that you can convey to our youth in terms of the importance of you know having faith? Well. I'll start by saying, yes, I do believe in God. Um, um, I want to say, you know, God put everybody here for a purpose. You know, um, and I feel like I'm here. You know, God didn't give me many talents or many gifts, but I have the gift of music. I have the gift of working with children. You know, I, I like working with kids, you know, because I feel like I'm a, I'm a big kid. So, you know, like, like I'm here to help people like find your purpose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like if your purpose is anywhere in there, the area that I can help, you know, like, I feel like that's what people need to know their purpose. Like if, if, if somebody has a purpose in life and they find it, no matter how big or small that, that role is, like they're going to feel important. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they'll take their life, they'll take their, take their, take their situations a little more important or, you know, like they'll, they, like they'll, they'll think about it more and not, and not do like the crazy stuff, you know, like, you know, they'll be more focused on their purpose and their, in their, in their um, goal. But, you know, most, most people, most children, most teens need somebody to, to bring it out of, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, like God put me here for a purpose and it's to help people through music, you know, through talking, you know, I'm a chill guy. So, you know, I'm like that's that, that's yes, people. Is. So, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I think that's why I'm, I'm here. I appreciate that. And hey guys, you know, beefs are not new. When you guys came out, there were beefs. You know, somebody didn't get along with somebody, some neighborhood didn't, you know, you couldn't cross the line type thing. And you know, on top of everything else that's going on out there, we're hearing a lot about this beef stuff. Um, what do you think is particularly different in terms of how youth are looking at beefs today as opposed to when you guys were coming up, um, Sid? Well, I mean, it's really sickening this day and age with beefs. Like we had beefs when we was young, mm -hmm. but we didn't carry a beef to gun fights and we, we didn't Why though? It. I mean, why do you think you didn't? Well, I mean, most of all, we, we learn from it. A lot, of, a lot of times, like if I'm beefing with him, like when we was coming up, going to the go-go, we might be beefing with somebody. But then when you sit back and think about what the beef was, it's really not that important. It wasn't that much a bigger deal, especially not for me to go get a gun. Mm -hmm. Try to kill them, mm -hmm. and the youngest today. That's the first thing they do. Like, and most of it come from not having older people around them. Mm -hmm. Cause like when you 16 and 17, these youngers that 16 and 17 now, 15, 16, 17, they doing things way beyond the scale of what we was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as the violence amongst each other, upon right. each other. Right. You had people in your neighborhood. Like what bust your side, man? Leave one on with you, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Man, I ain't worth all that, man. That's your right. boy. Right. Y'all right. shaking if they can't do it's like they can't do that, man. It's like right. they, they refuse to try to squash a beef. Mm -hmm. It goes on and they don't realize what it does to the other people that's in these people's family. Yeah. As far as the beef they had. You had a beef with Travis, you killed Travis. Travis mother is gonna suffer from that. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And his family members gonna hurt from that. Now his family going back at his family. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot of unnecessary violence when it comes to the, the way they beef now. You used to get get in a fight with a dude, and y'all fight, and then the mom, they right. hang out. That's yep. it. Yep. That's it. Yep. Hey, hey, quick pick up on that. I see you nodding a lot, and I know you got something to add to that. What's going on? What's the difference from beef back in the day to what's going on now? I mean, what's what said said is pretty much it. I mean, it's real. Um, like, like another another major major thing is um, access. You know, back in the back in the day, you know, if you had beef with somebody, you had to wait 
to see them whenever you, you saw them. I mean, now, I mean, you can get in touch with anybody. Everybody know your business. So if somebody know that you back down, back down from a fight, the whole world is going to, to, to know now. So you don't want that pressure. You know, I mean, it's, it's like, oh, there's so much access now. You know, like back in the day, we didn't have this to, mm -hmm. to, to instigate things, you know, yeah. to size things up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was just, if you were really that, really wanted to fight them, you know, like it was just in you, not through this, but it, you know, it was mental. You know, mm -hmm. like this like brought a lot of, a lot of anger to, to people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just your surroundings, you know, like, Try to monitor yourself, like what you do on social media. I mean, I I don't even like talk about social media. I mean, it's a real big problem. Oh my God. That's not a big problem. It, it, it works for the good. It works for the bad. You know. That's you, right. Like you got to be mentally strong to handle a social media. That's right? right. And that's how a lot of problems start too. You know, you see one thing, somebody comment on something, you may not yeah. even know this person, and they come. I mean, it's I not, love it's that. Not you said you got to be mentally strong. I mean, whatever you're going to put behind that, you got to be mentally strong. Guys, it's real talk. It's real talk. And if you're going to be responsible enough to be out there in it, at least be responsible enough to recognize what it's doing to you. Hey, Mr. Hill, we need some heroes in the community, I think I hear us all saying. Yeah. Talk to me about how we stop this gun violence. I know this question has come your way from MI before, but in the context of what the guys are talking about, and I've heard you talk about the sensationalism of social media and what they're seeing every day, how are we going to stop this gun violence? Well, uh, again, some of the things that I call for, uh, and that's the involvement of community with government, Right now, we have a, an absolute separation between government and community, MPD and community. And we need to have the ideas of uh, uh, careers that are not looked upon as something fancy or the thing to be done. Or, you know, like the barber used to be the person we could all go talk to. You know, the, the, the sanitation worker was the guy that we, we couldn't wait to see that truck come down the street so we could tell him to blow a horn. You know, it's different things now that have captured the attention of our youth so much so they don't even get the chance to look in toward the future of what they want to be. With vocational trades being pulled from our schools, that's pulled the eyesight or the, uh, the vision of what I could do later on besides rap, play basketball, football, or baseball. And in our community, uh, you know, when I was coming up, we had the examples uh, right around us, our family members, you know, and we saw how being in business, for many on my part, being in business were those examples of what I wanted to do when I, when I got older because they helped me understand, although I have a job and I, and I run a business, my customers are my boss. Yeah. So don't ever think for one second because you have a business, you are not going to be held right. accountable to someone. That's right. And that also spilled over into how we uh, dealt with school mm -hmm. and respect to those who are older, older than us in the community. Um, these are things that I think we're lacking right now, and we need that kind of involvement from everyone instead of it being one or a few. That's right. In my, my mother's keeper and so many of these other organizations touch so many lives. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and one of the things that I, I'll, I'll say quickly. When I got into campaigning for the council seat, uh, some people would say, you know what, I've never seen you before. I didn't know who you were and that kind of thing. And I had to explain to them that it wasn't that I wasn't working or doing things in the community. I was just in a different circle than mm -hmm. we were in. Mm -hmm. And having them understand that once you get inside of my circle, you can begin to see some of the 350 lives that I touch mm -hmm. through business. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we get into those discussions, we start finding out how there are relationships with people that are in their family that I know. Mm -hmm. And we begin to talk about how we 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 only two or three people from touching someone in our circle. Exactly. And one of those examples that I use and I say quite often, we all came off the same farm somewhere along the line. <laughs> so we're cousins. That's we're right. family. That's right. And we want to take each other's head off over nothing. Yeah. I haven't seen anything or heard anything yet that would warrant someone taking someone else's life. Yeah. And I've been in Lebanon. Yeah. 
And, and, and we had a reason to believe that if I don't take you, then somebody going to take me. Mm -hmm. They're using that kind of language here in the street. Right. Right. I've talked to some youngsters that were saying, you know, if I if I don't make a move first, they're going to get me. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Where we have that kind of fear yes. amongst our young yes. that they don't they, they can't manage the conflict right. differently than what than what we have seen here lately. That's right. Hey guys, this is in my mother's keeper. This is another one of our series in our hashtag Save DC. This is our conversation with the OPM band and members of the community that care about this gun violence and this senseless, senseless killing that are happening in our city. Guys, there's a little Sid, there's a little Quick, there's a little V looking to manage the band. There's all kinds of uh, folks in the community. There's a little Fred out there that's looking to come forward and to be able to um, help run and, and bring order and leadership to a city. Um, there's a little Pastor Ann out there. There's a little MI out there. Guys, what we have to do is to recognize that it is up to all of us to step forward and come back to being the family that many of us grew up feeling like in the city. Um, these youngins don't have that. And my mother's keeper is disheartened to see so many people give up. I'm talking to my generation right now. There's too much judgment. You keep talking about how they lost their way, how you know ain't no hope for them, um, how you can't get through to them because they won't listen. Well, keep talking, keep talking. Because there's a heart inside of these bodies that are pulling these triggers. And there's a reason, there's an emotion behind why this is going on. Before I ask Pastor Ann to talk to us about her perspective about how we end this gun violence, I want to point out that yes, it's a nice, wonderful day in the city, and it's the middle of an afternoon, so you're hearing all the sounds of the city, so we're apologetic if you're not getting that polished feel that you're used to, but we didn't come for polish, we came for real. We're talking about losing lives in our city, and we got to come to the table and be a part of the change that we need to see. It's voting season, and it's time to get real with each other. If you don't do something or help somebody else to do something to change this, then it's going to touch your family and your life. And we've already lost so many beautiful souls in this city because we are not at the table. We don't need to wait for the legislators to tell us how to take care of our families. We are in the face of gentrification. Don't act like you don't see Anacostia turning another color. Don't act like the home of Frederick Douglass isn't becoming something else. This is our city, this is our town, and it's up to us. And my mother's keepers out on these streets because it ain't cool to be judging. It ain't cool to be looking the other way. It ain't cool that our youngers are sleeping in cars. I got single mothers sleeping in hallways. I got families that's hungry. Got all this click and this beef going on. They out there protesting at a job site. I ain't seen the protest for another year. A year ago they did that. Why did it just happen that one day? Pay attention to the under uh, people's hidden agendas. Pay attention to you being used to get other people's messages out. And then your life going back to being the same. Our children are not being educated properly, and that's happening on the watch of many people that we know, that we voted to put in there. So this is bigger than politics. I'm not interested in all these candlelight vigils with no disrespect. I'm sorry we're losing any lives. But there are too many candlelight vigils going on. We've got to come together and hold them responsible before we lose our babies. This is in my mother's keeper. We out here in these streets. We come from these streets. This gun violence is real and it needs to stop. If you know somebody, let somebody know that we need to do something. Share this. Use this social media for good. I got brothers from the Go-Go community that don't need to be sitting here right now. But they took the time out because they understand that we have to all do our part. We're all responsible. Eight shootings happened the other day. Eight. These guns are going off rampant. And don't tell me that they're not running back up in households that are harboring it. You're responsible. We must all come together. This is no judgment. This is real. We all made it through, and it's time that we make sure they make it through. Hey, Pastor, talk to me. How are we going to stop this gun violence? Well, the first thing, and this is why I use the term, put your guns down. First thing we got to acknowledge, we all have a gun. To me, a gun is your attitude, how you treat somebody, if you're dealing with anger, if you got insecurity, you're lonely, you, you, you suffer from low self-esteem, 
and the list go on. That's a loaded gun. So we here, I'm with um, Sister Rhonda Hamilton, I'm one of her community partners. That's real. We're here, let's talk about it. And let's work on it together from a realistic point of view. And that's how these guns are going to go down. It's just a reaction. They don't know what to do. Again, because they're not able, they don't teach us how to conflict, argue conflict. Mm -hmm. They don't teach us how we can agree to disagree. I, I agree with my brother over there with this social media thing. We on now microwave time. Mm -hmm. And with microwave, I, I, I taught my son when we moved a while back. We didn't have a microwave. I said, back in the old days, we wrapped it up in a little foil. Back in the old days, the heat of our bread, we put it in a brown paper bag, and we put it in the oven. It, it like, took maybe 30 to 40 minutes. Y'all had an oven? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking hot dogs over the flame. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> talk about a lot is gangster. It ain't gangster to leave your hand family hanging. It's gangster to be able to be big enough to deal with the emotion and to step away and say, I'm going to do something different. I know you got a heart. I've had conversations with you out there. And let me keep it 100 as I keep telling you guys in the community. We all have a role to play. Our babies are stuck inside the house to have to do their school lesson on the computer because of this pandemic. But you're sitting up all night in their hallways, carrying on shooting and yelling at each other, fighting against the women. You're supposed to be keeping the community. You're supposed to care about our kids. You're supposed to make sure that you're keeping it 100 so that no one comes into our communities and raid our women and, 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 and take advantage of our children. If I can't depend on you guys out there to be the soldiers that you're supposed to be, then who are we supposed to be able to depend on? Why is it okay not to care about the next one? See, and my mother's keeper cares about you, and I'm going to talk to you whatever level you want, but I'm also going to hold you responsible and accountable for your behavior and your decision making. So I'm asking you right now, I'm pleading with you to stop. The next time you got a decision to make, be the hero in the situation and just stop. 
there are too many other people in the community that's affected by the decisions you're making. We gotta stop making these candlelight vigils popular. I care, our organization cares that you live past tomorrow. We out there looking for little quicks and little sids. Our brothers are at the table that have agreed to be able to help us to teach how to do this music business because you guys are so interested in it. We got a, a, a trumpet player, Joe. I can't wait to see how many little babies we can teach how to play the drums, how to blow the trumpet, how to play the guitar, how to be able to get on that mic and rock out like Sid do, how to hold the note, how to keep the crowd going. They made Go-Go the official sound of D.C. D.C. is the nation's capital. We need to pass the baton. This is a conversation I have with Mr. Shorter, Mo Shorter, the manager for Junkyard. We've got to be able to have programs sprout up around this city that are going to be able to help our youth pass the baton so that Go-Go can live. But if you guys are killing each other over beefs, how can we even do that? We can't do this without you. We don't want to. And all this gatekeeping and bullying about who's click or whatever, ain't but one click. Ain't but one click. Ward 8. We didn't walk from East over to uh, uh, Panorama Room on a Friday night to get there to come through the door. Um, we didn't have to worry about guns flying and, and, and worrying about not being able to get back home. We were trying to get over to see Chuck. Get in the door, Mr. G in the background, you ready to take pictures, you ready to um, you know, conversate with folks you ain't seen in a minute. Come through the door, all you hear, Chuck, baby, don't give it. You know, we got to get back to being able to be the city that we are. You guys don't even know, don't have cherished memories because you're killing each other too fast. Cut it out. Somebody be a hero. And let's keep it 100. Everybody on the block ain't leading. Somebody's a get with. I know how that game works. Everybody ain't got to connect. You ready? You ready for this conversation? Let's cut it out. Let's stop with this get with mentality. There's something bigger out here. You done heard from Quick, you done heard from Lil Sid, you done heard from Fred, you done heard from Pastor. You ain't heard from Mr. M.I. because he specifically don't want to be <laughs> put on that mic. And it's probably because he had some stuff he didn't got into in his day. But he's still sitting at this table and he still does the work with us behind the scenes because he knows the importance of saving a life. It's a tough city to make it through. And Southeast ain't no joke. Ain't no joke out there in Southeast. But here we are 30 plus, 40 plus years later letting you know that you need to be able to live to tell the story. Our children are depending on you. If you're depressed out there, if you're feeling some kind of way, say something. It ain't cool making fun of people. They tell my mother she was the crazy lady because she walking around with voices. Because she in a city that didn't know how to help her or get her the proper resources. So now I'm the daughter feeling like there's something wrong with me because my mother is the crazy lady. How stupid is that? I'm a straight A student running a real estate company and ran an insurance company and now I'm out here trying to bring the message to you all. Stop shortchanging people's success because you don't understand or because you don't want people to know what it is with you. It takes a real hero to step up and get some help. So it's not cool out there what you're doing because you're shortening people's lives and you're hurting people's families and somebody's mother has to live with these realities. Shout out to Felicia out there and my beautiful baby, Ashley. She's no baby, she's a grown woman, but she took a bullet the other day when all those eight shootings happened. And I thank God that bullet didn't hit any of her organs. I remember that child down here. God bless you guys from my heart. There is a God and I thank God that he is real. Stop what you're doing out there. You're affecting people's lives and if you're walking around acting like it ain't you, don't wait until it is, because that's how bad it is in these streets. This your girl, this Rhonda, I'm out here, and my mother's keeper is doing this work because somebody's family needs to be saved. This is our hashtag Save DC series. Check our feed, and my mother's keeper.com is the website. Uh, you can get the phone numbers to reach us. But before we close out, I'm going to give everybody a final word, give everybody a chance to give you their final word. 
Hey guys, if there's anything you can dig deep that you haven't already shared with us, I'm going to start with you, little Sid. What kind of message can we give to our folks out there, our families, our youth, whatever it is, so that we can do something different with this gun violence? Well, especially to our youth. Uh, it's a saying I heard a long time ago, which pretty much got me on the right track and kept me out of so much violence, was to feel, think, and act instead of feel, act, and think. So before you, when you feel a certain way, think about your actions before you do them, and then you act upon them. That's all I can say. I appreciate that, Sid. Hey, Fred, can you give us the final word? Yes, uh, mine is, when you see me, talk to me. Um, I remember at one point in time, it wasn't that easy to, to get because I've always been moving, but there's different points and movements in my life right now that caused me to be available. You just need to know that you can approach me. Don't look at me as who I am, the businessman or the council person. Look at me as somebody that you can come talk to because I'm ready to listen. I love that. Thank you. Hey, Pastor, give us a final word. Just to know this, everybody is worth loving. And loving, love is not an act or an emotion. It's an action. Let's learn to act and then work with our emotions. Thank you. Hey, Quick, give us a final word. Um, Real simple, man. Um, live for tomorrow. You know, um, whether you're getting shot or you're shooting. I mean, you're either gonna be dead or in jail. I mean, live for tomorrow. You know, tomorrow. I mean, if you live it right, tomorrow not promised we have a better chance. Mm -hmm. You know, and who doesn't want to see tomorrow? I mean, especially at such a young age. Live for tomorrow, y'all. Think. You have to think. Put the gun down. Thank you. 100. I love that. Thanks, Quick. Hey, guys, it's your girl. I'm out here. The final thing I want to say, if you're trying to reach us, our Facebook is maxed out. We do this, so I can't imagine this message is not going to amplify our YouTube channel. We're working on it. So if you're young and out there and you need something else to focus on, get out here and help my mothers keep it do this work and get this word out. We have projectenough.com, P-R-O-J-E-C-T-E-N-U-F-F.com. Enough is enough. Every night under fire and fear is how our children are living. It's how they're going to sleep because of your reckless choices and your reckless behaviors. Stop and think. We're with you in these streets. We love you. If there's anything we can do to help you, let us know. But reach out. If you're a mother out there and you've got a family that's going through, say something. You're not by yourself. And my mother's keepers kids. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And we have a YouTube channel, I'm sorry, we're on our Instagram, and we have a YouTube channel. We may not be as popular in some of those arenas, but we're out here. And if we need to be, then we need you. It's real out here. Mental health matters. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for Thank taking you. time. Thank you. God bless out there. Talk to you.